welcome to CivilNet. We have a special guest here in our studio. He is Pierre Akulian. He is the president and founder of Canadian Gem. He is also the founder of the Armenian Jewelers Foundation and the Armenian Jewelers Association and a former president of the Canadian Jewelers Association. Uh, that's quite a biography. Welcome to CivilNet. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, you're here. Um, it is now the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. There are commemoration events taking place not only in Armenia, but in every country where there is an Armenian community. Um, but you're here also on a very special mission. Uh, you've been involved in this project called The Lost Treasures of Armenia. Uh, please tell us what, what, it, what it is, what it's about. First and foremost, I have to tell you, I'm here in Armenia for a personal visit, not anything to do with anything else. I just came here to put five roses at Tizer Nagapert, and that's my mission in Armenia. The other mission you're talking about is in St. Petersburg. Okay. I will go there after, uh, on the 26th, because we have the opening of an exhibit uh, at the Museum of Ethnography, where, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a professor called Miller, uh, Miller came here in 1916 with the permission of the Tsar himself, uh, who authorized this uh, mission. And they came to collect artifacts of uh, Armenians. If they were to put Armenians in a museum, how would they present the Armenians? And he was a, a professional, and he was choosing specific items so that he can uh, present the Armenians in the Museum of Ethnography in St. Petersburg. So what happened is they collected all this uh, uh, treasures if you want uh, and then they went back to St. Petersburg and for 95 years it was stored away nobody it was never exhibited never exhibited and somebody figured it out they found out that there's a manifest there's all kinds of um, uh, stories and written documentation and they brought it out a very small exhibit they did with few pieces and then uh, we found out about this and we got involved and uh, we've spent a good year and a half working uh, very, very closely with the museum. And uh, the catalog is now being printed today. As we speak. As we speak. <laughs> uh, as usual, uh, a pro project like this is very, very technical. And we had a lot of editing to do. And even last week, we had edits coming from the museum. So that, uh, but we want to make this a, a incredible work of uh, art, if you want, not only a catalog, but a, a, an amazing, amazing project in the sense that the title itself is so significant. Uh, Lost Treasures of Armenia. Okay. No, it's not. What is it? Okay. That would have been a good title. Uh, but we were able to convince the museum to use the word Western Armenia. So. That was what I was going to ask you. When you say that the, the Tsar commissioned this uh, Miller to come to Armenia to collect artifacts, when we say come to Armenia, where did he actually go? Do we know? Well, what happened is, uh, as I mean, you know, this the was Russian during World War One, the, when, as yes. Armenians were being massacred, and yes, what happened though? The Russian army uh, they went into the eastern and uh, western Armenia, right. where, where where it was under Turkish uh, or Ottoman rule. So Vasparagan and Van and all those areas. So the artifacts are from there, yes, from Western yes, Armenia? Yes, absolutely. They went into, with the army, they followed. It was a dangerous mission in a way, but they went in and they collected as much as they could. What kind of uh, artifacts did they collect? What's part of the collection now? Uh, it, you know, initially we thought there's going to be a lot of jewelry. So as jewelers, we right, were you very were interested. interested. <laughs> so we want to find out and we want to print anything that we can find on, the, on jewelry. But we ended up uh, seeing that jewelry is maybe one third of the, uh, and it's not, it's not really high end jewelry. It's not something that you would say, you know, you would find in the crown jewels of uh, uh, some other countries. Mm -hmm. It's everyday jewelry. It's everyday uh, stuff that people would wear, uh, or the clothing also. Uh, the pictures that they took, none of them have been published, or very few ha have been published. So we have about. 50 pictures that they took this like uh, photographs photographs at the time mm. and it wasn't published so. so so the exhibition has a curator or somebody who's familiar with all this and 
um, you said there was letters and writing. So th this how it's taken a year and a half to put the collection together to curate it, or no? Th I think there was a curator who was working on this for a while. Uh, her name is Lucine, and uh, she she's the one who's working with us. But uh, once she finished her job, the rest of the team, the museum team, we've been working with them closely to make sure we have everything 100% right. Is this, uh, you know, I'm trying to, to, to go through my own uh, personal memories. Uh, is this the first time that such a thing is being done? Uh, a collection of artifacts from Western Armenia during the Armenian Genocide taken and sort of hidden away, either intentionally or by mistake, in a museum in St. Petersburg. I don't think it's by mistake. It just uh, look, look at the situation. 1916, they collect. By the time these goods come back to uh, St. Petersburg, the, f the revolution happens, the Russian Revolution and uh, everything is upside down and everything is forgotten. Then the Second World War, of course, uh, they had the, the, the biggest battles of the Second World War in that region. And then it was completely forgotten for all this time. Okay, so you're going to be printing a catalog, as we said. And the, when is the exhibition going to officially open? On the 27th of, uh, of April. April. We were originally planning for the 21st, but because of the high level uh, government uh, ministers that we were expecting to be there for the opening and they couldn't make it because of the 21st being such a sure, busy hectic time, here. time yeah. So we postponed it to 27 so that um, the government is uh, properly represented. Vikan will be there, the chief of staff of the, of the president for the opening. So what are the goals? I mean, why did the Jewelers Association, I'm assuming invest quite a bit of money to you know, put the exhibition together, to get uh, to to print a catalog that seems to be going to be very comprehensive. What was the objective? It's part of our mission. Our mission, the foundation, Armenian Jewelers Foundation. I mean, we have two organizations: Armenian Jewelers Association, which is the networking platform to bring all the jewelers uh, together uh, in any way possible and make them work together or know of each other. That's that's one mission. The other mission, the foundation, is our mission is to tell the world uh, the contribution of the Armenians to the jewelry heritage of the world. And we have, I think we have a singular position there. We are, we are, one, we are the nation, if I can put it in one sentence, we are to jewelry what the Swiss are for watches today. Because Swiss weren't always the... the, the sure, sure. The, the, so leader. that's as it's, you know corporate social responsibility in a way, right? I mean, networking, ensuring that the jewelry industry in Armenia uh, expands and grows, and then at the same time to bring that heritage to a wider audience. I think I think the purpose, really, the, the, if you want the core purpose, is to be able to give Armenians something to be proud of, yeah. and we have a lot of things to be proud of as Armenians, but. Uh, jewelry is probably one of those trades that we can excel from all the others. Mm -hmm. We've contributed more than you can imagine, but it's not known. N not even Armenians know about this. No, certainly. So we want to make sure uh, this is known all over the world. And this happened to be somehow in, in the same vein uh, to, to, to tell the world, this is, we were going to call this the lost treasures of Western Armenia because we lost much more than just treasures. We lost all those people who created all those uh, uh, pieces of art or so. But then for some reasons we changed the title. We were calling it the uh, lost, no, treasures of Western Armenia. Right, well, perhaps it's a good thing that the word lost isn't in there. <laughs> Because the lost would, would have pertained to the people who, who right, we lost. The, right. Our biggest assets that we lost were the 1.5 million Armenians who, who perished. This is our biggest loss. Yeah. You said you're, you're here on a personal mission to lay five flowers. Why five? First one is for my namesake, uh, Bedros Akelian. The other one is for Stepan Mgrdichan, my grandfather. Uh, Khatun. Uh, Khatun is... Uh, is my grandmother, mat uh, uh, paternal, and then uh, Katerina is my mother's mother. They all lost their families during the genocide. Uh, their first families, or their, you know, my father lost his first wife, four children, my grandmother lost her husband and four children. So those flowers are 
for them. And the fifth one is for my nation, the rest of them. Wow. I think on that note, uh, I'd like to thank you. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing uh, in the jewelry industry, not only. Uh, I think that it's, it's an important um, endeavor as we are now finishing up this one century of, 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 of that pain and now moving on to the next century, hopefully, that will bear more promise for the we Armenian will. people. We will survive and we, we will not only survive, we will prosper. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Pierre Akulian. He is the founder of the Armenian Jewelers Foundation of the Armenian Jewelers Association, uh, founder and president of Canadian GEM. Stay with Civilnet.